49 points and two double word scores is 196 points. Haha, <laughs> I win. Um, dude, Ziki is not a real word. Yes, it is. Just let me go ask Carl. Um, Carl's at the boss's poetry recital. And so is Idex. Oh! This is stupid! Why are we here again? Like I said, our boss forced us to come here. Now put these earplugs in. Let's just say that since he started writing poetry, Bogan poetry has become the fourth worst type. And now, I present my first poem! Anyone who listens to this will be turned into stone! That's just a silly name, right? Oh, by the way, the poem's name is totally literal! Yeah, earplugs in. <gasps> Hello, ants. Around, around, swim! The remainder of that poetry recital has been removed from the video because people being turned into stone is bad. Anyway, Beatnik is an esoteric programming language that was created by a man named Cliff L. Biffle. Beatnik is based off of the classic board game Scrabble. Each word of the source code is converted into its respective Scrabble score, and those numbers are what the computer reads and executes as instructions. But if the programming language is based off of Scrabble, then why is it named after a cultural stereotype of the 50s? Well, let's look at a simple Beatnik program, not as a computer program, but as a poem. Sand beat up near Zanzibar. Stonably, Captain. Ninja, Orange System. Ninja, Jupiter Arsels. Sing it, Lemon Silver. It sounds like it was written in one draft while the author was doing some sort of bizarre drugs that make you totally see the world for what it is, man. That's why it's called Beatnik. So, what does this program do, anyway? Well, to make it easier on ourselves, let's convert it to its Scrabble values. That's all the computer cares about, and the fancy words don't matter as long as the Scrabble values match up to actual commands. Sand and top are interchangeable, since they both have the same Scrabble score. Also, your program can contain the word assholes, but in this video, I'd rather have standards. <laughs> But, uh, these numbers still don't tell you very much about what this does, so... I guess we'll just run through it. So the first opcode that this program reads is 5. Words with a Scrabble value of 5 push the next word's value onto the stack. Hold on! Just what is a stack? I'm glad you asked. A stack is something that I should seriously make a video dedicated to. No, really. But anyway, a stack is what Beatnik uses to store numbers so that we can use them later. Numbers can be put on top of the stack, called pushing, and they can be removed from the stack, called popping. The first two words of code push specifically the number 4 to the stack. After a number's value is pushed, it is skipped, so any instruction that would come with that word does not happen. And yes, I know that 4 points does not actually have an instruction, I'm just saying that if it did, it would be skipped here. The next two words push another four to the stack. Yee. Wait, Zanzibar? That's not a valid Scrabble word! Even though it totally should be? Well, that doesn't matter. Well, you know what does matter? Zanzibar has a Scrabble score, or at least it would have a Scrabble score, of 28! That's not a valid Beatnik op code! You're right. Values with an opcode over 17 do... NOTHING! But having a value greater than 23 gives you Beatnik Applause! <laughs> really? That's your reason for randomly putting Zanzibar here? YES! So, let's review. The first line of code has been read, and now there are two fours on the stack. Now, another number is placed onto the stack yet again. This time, it's a 1. This is used in the following operation. A word with a value of 10 is a subtraction operation. One example of a word with a value of 10 is bully. This operation pops the top two values off of the stack, the second value has the first value removed from it, and the result is placed onto the stack. So this would subtract 1 from 4 and give you 3. Words with a value of 11, such as captain, swap the top two values on the stack. The second value is brought to the top, and the first value is placed under it. This is so that we can manipulate the other value in the third line of code. Words with a score of 12, such as ninja, duplicate the top value on the stack. This is pretty simple, and I won't go over it in too much detail. 
because it's pretty simple. Words with a score of 7, such as orange, add the top two values on the stack together and leave just one result. Again, a fairly simple operation. Dude, all the operations in Beatnik are simple. Some might argue, too simple. After the top value on the stack is doubled, the two values on the stack are flipped again. The 3 here is acting as a counter, while the 8 will eventually become our result. The top value on the stack is duplicated again. What follows is perhaps the most complex operation in Beatnik, flow control. A word with a Scrabble score of 16 will pop the top value on the stack and check if it is a zero. That variable is then sent on to the big hard drive in the sky to be gone forever. <laughs> that poor number! Don't cry, little penguin. That's why we cloned it! This sort of thing is going to happen with teleporters. Anyway, if the value that was sacrificed is not a zero, the next word in the code will be taken in as a parameter, and it will be converted to its Scrabble value. In this case, the word standards has the value of 11. Now the program jumps backwards that many words, so it jumps back to Zanzibar. And now it keeps looping through this until the counter value reaches zero. So now we're at the finalizing stages of this program. Sing it, Lemon Silver! The program adds 2 to the top value on the stack. The next opcode pops the top value on the stack and prints it to the screen. And that is this 5-line beatnik program. That took a while to go through, and that's why these videos are getting longer each time I make a new one. So, are we gonna run it now? Sure! Why don't you do the honors of pressing the button? That's it? One lousy character? That whole explanation was for this? Yeah. Luckily for us though, a program that prints the entire word beatnik would be easy from here. Getting to 65 to reach the alphabet is always the hardest part, especially in an SOLang that doesn't have any multiplication features. To print the other letters after B, you would only need to add or subtract small numbers. Yes, I got lazy and started only using one word for each value because deep down, computers hate poetry. So let's look at another program, and before you click off, don't worry, it's much shorter. It came! Broken King Kitchen Sand! Hmm, well, Broken King could be a metaphor for monarchies falling, and Kitchen Sand could be a metaphor for... You know what? Forget it. This is pointless. So this program takes an input and spits it back out at you. This is referred to as a cat program. The word it has a value of 2, and it doesn't do anything. The interpreter is supposed to mock me for this, since it's a very short word, but it doesn't. Also, it's hard to not use words in poetry such as it, is, or a. Uh. The word came has a Scrabble score of 8. This opcode means that the program will take input from the user as a character and push it onto the stack as that character's ASCII value. So if you typed an A, a 65 would be put onto the stack. If you typed a B, a 66 would be on the stack, and so on. Next, that number is duplicated and printed. If it is not a zero, the program jumps back to the start. And that's the simple cat program. And yes, it displays debug information, but shh, debug mode doesn't exist. Also, remember that thing I said at the very beginning of the video? Here's a flashback in case you were wondering. Hello, Ant! Around, around, swim! Well, this was actually an example program that shifts the letter forward by seven characters. And I bet you thought I was just doing a weird intro. That was a weird intro. This video is dumb and stupid! Now, I'm going to read a poem called Whoever listens to this will start bleeding profusely from their eye sockets! Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ow! Ugh, that guy is just the worst. Did you really need to hit him with a spatula, though? Actually, never mind. The answer to that is yes.